was rock musicals and concept musicals. I will tell you that the musicals that were written in the 70s are among my favorites. I'll tell you why when we get there. Um, in 1973, as an orchestra seat started to soar, and A Little Night Music, which was a hit in 1973, was now $12.50 a seat. If anybody hasn't been to a Broadway musical lately, it's ten times that now. This was also the birth of the Broadway musical era um, that came from Britain. You had black musicals, you had rock musicals, you had musicals that weren't even musicals, you had jukebox musicals. All of this was invented in the 70s, and this was the first decade ever where we had no hit songs come from a Broadway musical that you heard on the radio. You didn't sing along to anything. Now, there's one or two small exceptions to this. Send in the Clowns was recorded by Judy Collins in 1973. It became a big hit at Stephen Sondheim's Surprise. Uh, it was then recorded by Frank Sinatra. It was recorded by Tony Bennett. But it was still not considered pop music. I mean, people know the song. Uh, it's one of our favorites. But um, wasn't right. Now, this is who they were at the time that was right. Now, Stephen Schwartz was my wife's camp counselor when she went to uh, sleepaway camp. He was the theater counselor. Um, this is Stephen Sondheim. Uh, he's just celebrated his 82nd birthday. Uh, he's considered the genius of the American musical theater. He was raised by Oscar Hammerstein. Uh, I met him once. My son actually spent four days with him when he was a scholar at residence at Southern Methodist University. Uh, he's probably going to be like the Mozart of the American musical theater. Uh, Kendra <coughs> Ebb, who had written Cabaret, had, got, had tremendous uh, recognition at that point in time. Then Marvin Hamlish in 1976 uh, became a major force in the theater. Remember, he had written the song The Way We Were. He had already been rec recognized for a lot of his movie music, but his first Broadway musical did uh, change things quite a bit. That was a chorus line. We had Jerry Herman. Now, Jerry Herman, interestingly enough, went out of fashion for 14 years. He wrote Hello, Dolly. He wrote Mame. He wrote a musical with Angela Lansbury called Dear World. He wrote a musical in 1973 called Mac and Mabel, which was Bernadette Peters' first musical uh, starring role. And it didn't do well. And he got the impression no one wanted his kind of musical anymore. And he didn't write a thing for 14 years. Choreographers. Um, Bob Fosse. So I was sharing with somebody, he died in Washington in the 80s during a revival of uh, Sweet Charity. He had a heart attack on the street. Uh, this is Michael Bennett, who died from AIDS. Tommy Toon, my wife and I just saw him do a one-man show. He's 73 years old, totally amazing. Um, um, this was Gower Champion, a very famous story about Gower Champion. I'll probably talk about this later. When 42nd Street opened was the day he died, and David Merrick, who was the producer, figured out it would be fun to capitalize on that. Hmm. He came out as the curtain came down and announced David uh, Gower Champion, who created this wonderful evening, has just died today. You know, and uh, David Merrick never missed a chance to capitalize on anything. Now, if you all seen the movie All About Eve, they decided to make a musical about it, but the problem was they couldn't get the book rights. So they had to create a story that sort of looked like All About Eve, but they couldn't use a single word from it. They got the most famous widow in Hollywood to do it. That's what Lauren Bacall said of herself. Well, I don't know if I can sing, but it'll just be the other thing. I'll either be the biggest idiot or the, still the famous, most famous widow in Hollywood. She was really a big success in this. Uh, if you were to look, if you can go to YouTube and you can download uh, applause and you wonder why did anybody pay to go see it? But she was a personality. She was certainly pretty exceptional at the time. And uh, it's pretty dreadful. <laughs> this is the first of several Hal Prince, Stephen Sondheim collaborations. These are among my favorites. Company was a series of one-act skits uh, about marriage and coupledom. And it, it revolves around a bachelor. His name is Bobby, who's 36 years old. And it, it really was the first musical that was considered a, con a concept musical. It had no plot. It was a series of stories. And they're all loosely connected by the fact that these friends are always celebrating his birthday. And it's how these couples interact with him in New York. Uh, it has a wonderful score that, you know, again, this was not pop music. But over time, you know, if you go to cabaret performances or you go to musical concerts of Broadway performers, these, these songs are performed. Another hundred people just got off of the train and they're looking around at another hundred people who got off at the bus and they're looking around. That's one of the songs from that. Or very famous song that Elaine Stritch made famous. Here's to the ladies who lunch, everybody laugh. 
sitting in their caftans and planning a brunch in their own behalf. Off to the gym, then to a movie, claiming they're fat and looking grim because they've been sitting, choosing a hat. Does anybody still wear a hat? That's yeah. Elaine Stritch, made that famous. Um, it re it, that is Elaine there. This was Dean Jones who took the part initially. Uh, it's an extremely vocally demanding part. I was going to do Being Alive from this this morning, but decided since I want to cover so much territory, I'll opt out of that, and if you want, I'll do a private uh, rendition for you later. Um, then the next Hal Prince Stephen Sondheim musical, Follies. Talk about lambasted. It cost $750,000 to put Follies on in 1971. It had, the, the basis of it was a bunch of old chorus girls from a Follies production were going to have a reunion as they tear down a theater. Now, I, I just want to show you one picture. Uh, that's Alexa Smith, by the way, who won a Tony Award. Wait a minute. Okay, well, whoops. See this picture? That's Gloria Swanson standing in the rubble of the Roxy Theater. Stephen Sondheim and William Goldman, who saw this picture, decided, wouldn't it be interesting to have somebody to have a musical about people and the relics of the past. So it was this picture that was the catalyst of Follies. Now Follies, you know, the, the subtext as it was, Follies is a, uh, a metaphor because we all have the Follies of life, you know? And what Stephen Sondheim did was take every major composer from like 1920 to 1940 and wrote every single song as if it were being written by a specific composer. Now, Irving Berlin wrote this song. A pretty girl is like a melody. I think it was Irving Berlin. It may have been Jerome Kern, forgive me. Anyway, it was Jerome Kern. The opening song of Follies is, hats off, here they come, those beautiful girls. So he copied the style of many of the composers who composed at the time. Um, I will tell you, it is an extravaganza. People criticized the book because they said it had no substance. But yet, now we're 40 years later. It was revived in Washington last year by the Kennedy Center. It went to New York with Bernadette Peters. Uh, it got rave reviews. It is truly, it, it's incredible. That's all I can tell you about. We just sat there and it, it's just awe-inspiring. Um, Interestingly enough, there was another musical that opened that year, a rock musical version of Two Gentlemen of Verona. It's undoable. It's not even interesting by comparison, and it beat Tony's out for the folly. I mean, for, to beat Folly's out for the Tony. Um, Alexis Smith won a Tony, Stephen Sondheim won a Tony for his music, Cal Prince for his direction. And the other thing that's really kind of interesting about it, RCA, who I believe recorded it, didn't record the entire score. So about 15 years later, the Link at Lincoln Center, there's a, they did a two-day concert where they recorded the score live. And it had Carol Burnett, it did have Elaine Stritch, it had Barbara Cook, it had... Was it Lee Remick? Yeah, she had to talk, yeah. It was Lee Remick, it had uh, everybody you can imagine to do this. And if you want to see a great DVD, it's one hour. It's just fantastic. And you get to see what they went into in the rehearsals, and you see the snippets of the production going in. Mandy Patinkin was in it. And what Stephen Sondheim said of it was, when you do something in concert, you know, you can violate the age requirements of some of the actors involved. Barbara Cook was a little too young. Mandy Timken was really too young. Um, I just drew a blank. Uh, George Hearn uh, was in it. He was a little too young. But what they pulled together was the first real recording of Follies. Now, Cameron McIntosh did it in London in the eight, about 1987. He had Stephen Sondheim write four new songs. They've been abandoned, and they've gone back to the original score. And that's Alexis Smith, Dorothy Collins, and Yvonne DiCarlo. For those of you who are Americans, you probably remember her as Lily Munster. Pippin um, was a coming-of-age musical, it was a rock <coughs> musical, a concept musical about King Charlemagne's son and his coming-of-age battles. I have to tell you, uh, uh, the, what really saved it was that Bob Fosse put his touch to it. Uh, it had not been touched for 40 years, and it just opened to a major revival on Broadway, got phenomenal reviews, and Ben Vereen, who originated the, uh, this is Ben Vereen.